NVIDIA has just launched their RTX 5070 Ti, and thanks to a viewer named Scott, I was able to test it remotely via Hive OS. The card was unrecognized at first, and I needed to update the driver to 570.86.16 manually with the NVIDIA-Driver-Update command in Hive. Even then, the GPU showed as graphics device 15G and not as a 5070 Ti, so that will be reflected in the screenshots. However, Rigel Miner was able to assign work and, as you will see, did not cause any performance issues. Due to the limited amount of time, I leveraged previous overclocking knowledge from the 5080 and the 5090 to get the best results as quickly as possible. Scott also only had a full system watt meter, so power at the wall is not available at this time. Even still, the power numbers were reporting just well enough to determine efficiency. To start things off, the RTX 5070 Ti was mining Zealous, which is a memory intensive algorithm at 65 kilohash a second at 140 watts for an efficiency of 0.46 kilohash a second per watt. Overclocks were applied with a plus 3000 megahertz memory offset and a 2000 megahertz locked core clock. Compared to even peak performance overclocks on the CMP170HX from viewers, the 5070 Ti is technically the new most efficient GPU for mining Zealous. On Autolico's V2, which mines Ergo and is a memory intensive algorithm, the RTX 5070 Ti was mining at 311 megahash a second at 131 watts for an efficiency of 2.37 megahash a second per watt. Overclocks applied were the same, which was the plus 3000 megahertz memory offset while tuning the core clock down to 1700 megahertz. Once again, the RTX 5070 Ti takes the efficiency crown again compared to the CMP170HX. On ETC hash, the 5070 Ti did experience some core bottlenecks for top hash rate, but still comes out more efficient than most GPUs with 88 mega hash a second at 141 watts for an efficiency of 0.62 mega hash a second per watt using plus 3000 megahertz memory offset and a 2100 megahertz core clock lock. Looking at Kapow, the 5070 Ti does not dethrone AMD, only mining at 46 megahash a second at 233 watts for an efficiency of 0.19 megahash a second per watt. Overclocking kept the 3000 memory offset and surprisingly keeping the core at 21 megahertz locked or 2100 megahertz locked. And the reason why that's surprising is usually on Kapow, you would turn up the core clock for more efficiency. Finally, the 5070 Ti follows its bigger brothers being terrible at fish hash mining with 69 mega hash a second at 209 watts for an efficiency of 0.33 mega hash a second per watt. The overclocks remain the same as Kapow and ETC hash. Some more support on the LOL miner and probably needs to be implemented to see full efficiency capabilities of Blackwell GPUs. To wrap things up, as predicted, the RTX 5070 Ti is more efficient than the 5080 and 5090, benefiting from the GDDR7 and smaller CUDA core counts primarily. We do still have the RTX 5070 to review, and it may be a good efficiency option, but I have some concerns with the bus width being cut down to 192 bits. If we talk about pricing on the 5070 Ti, current availability is really in the $900 to $1,000 range, meaning you may be better advised to purchase CMP170HX cards from Coastal Crypto, as they have a bunch in stock for around $400 at the moment. Tell them Son of a Tech sent you. That being said, if your goal is to game and mine on the side, the 5070 Ti is more than likely the best option currently. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Tuesday.